I'm leaving the Mazda for its MOT. Hubnut, sponsored by Lancaster Insurance. For, um, I have community bus duty to do today. Uh, won't be in this Peugeot, I don't think. I love the way the paint just falls off Peugeot. I think NRJ the Crafter is going to be our steed for the day. And then later on, um, I will be coming down to see how badly the Mazda has failed. Because I suspect it isn't going to pass. Right, I managed to leave the paperwork with the um, car, so um, let's investigate my fail. So item number one, headlamp not working. I must admit I didn't even check the headlamps, but they seem to be working when I drove home. But he's changed a bulb, so that's crossed off already. Um, CV joint split. Maybe that's the clicky one. We don't know. I'll ask them to have a look, I think. Um, track rod end bulb joint dust cover. Um, that's fairly common, they just deteriorate and it's the same on the um, off side as well as the near side. We've got the near side front brake hose excessively deteriorated very very badly so I'm glad that's getting sorted out. And we've got the offside rear coil spring fractured and um, that's an annoying one. I'm not going to get into changing coil springs myself because you need spring compressors. There, there is no safe way of doing that. And um, to be honest, while the garage has got the car up on the hoist, I might as well get them to do the other items. So there won't be any video on that, I'm afraid. And then we've got a couple of um, advisories. Uh, brake hose has a bit of corrosion on the ferrule, but I can give that a rub down and a clean up. And there's a, uh, one of the seatbelts has slightly damaged webbing, uh, which we'll keep an eye on. Because obviously you don't want that um, going really badly wrong on you. So... All a bit um, anticlimactic at the moment. Um, Ellie does not have a friend for the night, uh, which means I actually have space on the driveway, uh, which is a novelty. But um, yeah, the garage is hoping to crack on with those parts tomorrow, and um, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And then I'm going to set about trying to smarten the car up because if it costs 300 quid to get this work done, it's a 500 quid car and um, it needs to look a bit smarter so whether i can track down some different panels um we'll see we'll see, see what i can do i do need to sort the sunroof out because that was leaking on my head mightily this morning on my drive to the garage that was very irritating indeed um so we'll see what we can do about that but yeah i mean i, I like driving it it is a nice car and um it definitely needs sorting out so there we go um Mazda will um, have to wait and we shall look forward to its triumphant return. In the meantime, let's have a video about Ellie. In this video, I really need to stop this car needing a jump start every five seconds. And what's gonna make this possible is a new battery. Oh, that's quite heavy. Right, we shall get that fitted and then hopefully I will have a 2CV that actually starts if you leave it parked up for a few days. So that's the old battery that was given to me by a friend of mine. It's um, unknown age but many years and um, yeah, if she, it just isn't holding charge anymore. And um, it's currently held in by cable ties as well which is not ideal, it just about meets the MOT requirement, but um, a better solution would be good. And that's okay because I have some. I also have a new hose because this one is, well, look at the state of it. It's knackered. So we've got a new hose to fit and some new battery clamps should be in here. Um, it's slightly easier to get up with two hands, but I managed to leave the tripod upstairs. That was clever. There we go, there should be um, two new threaded bars and a stainless steel clamp. So there we go, that's the clamp that'll hold the battery in place. And the two new threaded rods will hold that to the battery. So let's go and get all these items in place. We shall rest those there for the moment. 
We shall disconnect the battery, and I usually leave the terminals fairly loose. That's just a personal preference. I like to be able to pull them off in case of emergency. And I get some snips. And my box of tricks the other day actually included a pair of proper snips. Are they good? Uh, snip that. Oh yeah. I've got several quite useful cable ties there as well potentially. So always try and snip them in a good place. That means we can lift this battery out. The new battery seems a slightly different shape. It's much squarer, but hopefully that won't be an issue. Yeah. Bring it round. It certainly fits in the hole and uh, the bracket will hold on this edge and hook into these holes down here. Uh, so we'll start assembling those pieces. Fitting the clamp is not going well. Because this battery is smaller, um, I'm actually running out of thread on these sections. The battery is the wrong size. So that's, that's a bit annoying because um, I deliberately went to this website on recommendation from other people and um, searched for 2CV and this was the battery they recommended and it doesn't actually fit. So that's a little upsetting. So I think the only thing I can do really is try and pack um, out a bit, perhaps using some nuts that are slightly too large um, so that the clamps will actually um, yeah, so I'll try actually showing you. So if I try and pack these out a bit with some nuts, um, maybe it'll actually work then. Not quite how it was meant to be. There we go. A couple of extra nuts has packed things out sufficiently, but we've still got enough thread for the nut to act against. So that's now held nice and securely in place. Beautiful. Incidentally, this. Um, is to hold the voltage regulator, but um, I've already got a holder built into my battery tray. It's a reinforced battery tray because they didn't reinforce that section on right-hand drive 2CVs. And has a nasty habit of splitting the bulkhead. So, thank you for that one, Citroen. Right, we shall take away these caps, put them on the old battery. And we shall connect up the terminals. And the negative. So because they are a taper fit, you want a nice, or well, I like to have a nice um, push fit. So I, I, I just prefer the, the safety. If it was an electrical problem, I could easily pull them off. Um, see if that has done the trick. <laughs> So it sounds good. We shall leave her parked up for a few days after we've been for a run today and see if she now actually holds charge. That's our next job. Fit a hose. There we go. That wasn't too difficult. So we've got a new hose there. Uh, we've got a cable tie just to hold it because the last thing you want is these things dropping off onto the hot exhaust immediately below that does and can cause fire. I've got um, garden twine around these front hoses. That one's not in the best place perhaps but still it is better than nothing. And yeah so the heat comes through from the cylinders. We got the fan blows air through these heat exchangers. The exhaust pipe goes through make even more heat and uh, there's flaps in there all to whether the heater goes into the heating system or out through these pipes and out through a hole in the wing. And you should have tubes there as well. I never, ever have. Beautiful. Let's just have a peek at the engine oil while we're in here. Yep, right on the top mark. All right, all that remains to do is go for a test drive and to wave at my own shadow. Oh, rare spot at MG6.
but we're out on the test drive and the heater seems to be functioning well. I presume the battery is all right. Um, all good. <clears throat> a lovely day for a drive. Well, once again, um, I'm not going to try and fake this. A uh, complete master stroke. Ellie has been sat for a few days, you can tell, because the windscreen is filthy, very dusty. And um, yeah, I, I failed to record her starting after several days, which proves that the battery is good. Uh, let's wash the windscreen. We've just rolled the roof back. I carefully showed you how to do that without actually pressing record. There we go. I think that windscreen needs a polish, actually. Ew. Oh, great. I may end up regretting going for a drive today. today so there you go a slightly disjointed video jumping around in time obviously the Skoda isn't here anymore that has gone and the Reliant Fox engine is in the Fox well, there have been some issues there which we will discover in a future video but um, yeah Ellie has a new battery and new heater pipes the Mazda is still away um, for some MOT work and um, you can see what's going on with those vehicles in a future video uh, so thank you very much for watching don't forget to subscribe don't forget you can head to hubnut.org to buy all manner of goodies and i shall see you in a future video farewell